So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for our session today. I am excited to uh, be joined by uh, William Good, uh, Sophia Seward, Seward Good, Anna Lee Boy Good, and Thea Harris of the Shenanimo First Nation. Uh, today's presentation is titled Traditional Arts and Storytelling Through Contemporary Mediums. And so before we begin, I would just like to, again, formally introduce myself. Uh, my name is Heather Simpson. I am from the Sewakam Hutlam First Nation and MX European Heritage. I work here at JIBC as the coordinator for the Office of Indigenization. I'd like us uh, also to take a moment to acknowledge uh, the time and space in which we are occupying today. I'd like to respectfully acknowledge that June 19th is a significant day for many people across Turtle Island. On June 19th, 1865, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved African Americans from Galveston, Texas were informed the Civil War had ended. This date, June 19th, has become Juneteenth, a day that commemorates African American freedom. It emphasizes education and achievement and marks a time of rejoicing, reflection, and planning for the future. Truth-telling of our histories are foundational to having a respectful relationship which is really the essence of reconciliation. I'd like to acknowledge that I am facilitating this session from the New Westminster campus, which is situated on the ancestral territory of Coast Salish peoples, specifically Musqueam, Kakite, and Kwatlin First Nations. I'd also like to acknowledge that many First Nations are represented by the urban indigenous population across the Lower Mainland, Fraser Valley, the Okanagan, and the Victor Victoria area, which we serve. So I'd like to invite you to use the chat box feature to situate yourselves and acknowledge the lands if you do know them. Um, I'd like to uh, turn it over now to our guests uh, to locate themselves on the territory that they are joining us from today. Uh, so good morning. Uh, we are uh, from the Good Family here in Sanaimo, Nanaimo, BC. Uh, I think first what we'll do is let our dad open with a prayer song. Just uh, We are taught to always open in prayer. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to our father, the uh, the hereditary chief of Sanaimo. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to sing the prayer song, and it's an old song. And, uh, I'll start by singing now. <clears throat>
Kate, let's get the pass. Thanks, Kojab. We'll get back to work. Get back to work. Because, <laughs> Dutcham, thank you, William. Thank you for that prayer song and for starting us in a good way. I think, uh, All right, we'll just get reseated here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So right now uh, we have the map of uh, Shnanaimo up on the screen. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to share in terms of the territory that you're situated? Um, can you see us, first of all? Are we situated? <laughs> no, uh, Annalie, I see half of you. Okay. okay. There How's you that? go. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Sorry, situating ourselves. <laughs> um, we are currently um, on the Nanaimo River and in Sinaimo. And the spindle world behind us is carved by our dad, and it, it actually represents the first people's story of the river up there. And um, so that's where we are. Visually, you can see the spindle world. <laughs> and our people come, uh, so uh, the creator put two walls on the top of Mount Benson here, which we can see from our house. And it was a cold and winter night, and when those two wolves came down the, the mountain, they plowed across the Nanaimo River. And when they came on the other side to where we are currently, they had shed their fur, and they were the first man and woman of the Nanaimo River. So it's one of Nanaimo's creation stories taught to us from our dad, but also visually depicted in the spindle world, which happened to come up in conversation ahead of the flood. So that's what happened. <laughs> and that's where we are today. So I think we can go to the next slide. Great, thank you. Uh, so here is the agenda. We're just going to take a quick peek, and I just have to mention a few housekeeping items. Um, thank you for uh, those who are on the line right now have respectfully uh, turned off the microphones and the video uh, to help uh, to save the bandwidth and, and make sure that we can all stay well connected in this session. Um, but I do want to mention that this is meant to be a um, space where we can interact with one another. And so please feel free to use the chat box feature throughout the presentation uh, to uh, ask any questions or comments uh, for our guest speakers. Um, if you do need to exit uh, the session uh, at any time, please do so using uh, the X in the top right uh, corner of the Skype app. And so just going to go on to uh, the uh, welcome message that uh, you have chosen to share with us today. So I'll pass it over to you. So I well good day. Siam na sokan, siam na siaya, siam na shwalakwa. So my respected elders, my respected friends, and my respected family. Ankapa Sophia, a Thea, a Anneli. So I am indeed Sophia and Theodora as well as Anneli. Tana Tani San Ato Snanemo. So we are from Nanaimo. And I Polana Ak Snanemo. We go ahead to the next slide. We are getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that on their end. Um, just wanted to uh, mention that. So if you could um, kindly maybe speak up too, if we can kind of work through that um, feedback that we're getting on the line. Is it because the volume is so high? Uh, is it because the volume? Maybe. I can turn the volume down a little bit. Did that make a difference? It, it seems to. Yeah. We had to turn it up for our dad. <laughs> OK. Yeah, that, that sounds better. Um, and maybe if you could all shift slightly to the right to get all of you into the shot. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. 
right. And so up on um, the slide is your uh, formal introduction. Would you like to share some um, background information about yourself? I guess we've already shared some of it. Um, but is there still feedback? Is it okay? That sounds much better. Okay. And there's a so, comment coming in that it is better. Oh, great. So we have, um, we work as a family together and we have for a very long time, actually. We recently pulled out some photos of our niece, Thea, modeling when she was 10-ish, 11. And um, it was just a way of life for us to grow up with our parents and her grandparents being artists. So um, in, in being a second generation Coast Salish design house, we're also third generation. We're involving all of the uh, other family members. And that is what we do in our company as a design house. Okay, thank you. So we collaborate in textile arts, music, um, various components of art design and, and various media. Hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you. I know that uh, you're an extremely talented, um, multidisciplinary family. Um, and it's, uh, it's just so wonderful to see the knowledge is transferring from one generation to the other and, and really working uh, collectively uh, for a family legacy. I shared a little bit about that um, in an email that went out to our, our staff and faculty yesterday. Um, so up, up on the screen right now is a slide that uh, is an introduction to uh, your company, your family business, Ailelam. Yeah, so my sister and I, Anneli and I, we um, we run Ailelam, the Good House of Design, but it's more than just running a clothing company. We really are documenting our Coast Salish art, culture, and history featuring our Dan and Brothers artwork. Um, we make appropriate clothing for all. So we include every diversity, size, shape. We want everybody to be able to understand, learn, and wear our wearable art, really. Um, we create eco-friendly garments with natural and sustainable fabric. So we try to stay as local and eco-friendly as possible. So we use a lot of hemp and recycled fleeces, organic cottons. Uh, we try to stay as sustainable as possible while manufacturing in BC. Next slide. <laughs> okay. So here we so, have. So, hmm? oh. You can see it. You can see the slides clearly from where you're sitting. Yes. Okay. Terrific. So in the theme of traditional arts and storytelling, that was a really important component of our decision making for our company. Um, Sophie and I were raised looking art, history, culture from our parents. It was all applied. They did it in business. And then when they retired, there was a huge gap in our family where it would have been missed. And it was important for us to, as Sophie said, document and share the information that we were taught. Um, so with all of the work that they did in their time, had we not picked this up to continue it, it would go by the wayside. And that is an important part of what we do. Hmm. Ready to go more? Mm -hmm. So there are many ways of um, platforms for storytelling, like oral, visual, functional, through music, through language. And the one thing about oral history is that our dad was taught by his grandfather, uh, the late William Good, who's the son of Chief Louis Good from Snanemo. So this information is passed on through multiple generations. It's, a, it's ancient oral history that has been shared through to our generation. And then when you look at the visual history, um, according to our dad, traditional Coast Salish art is a written language and it's a form of documentation in of itself. So it's, it's likened to a complex visual literary system um, where it was almost lost and extinct and he spent his career and lifetime revitalizing it and he incorporates stories and legends into every piece he makes. Every piece has meaning, every part of the piece has meaning, it's very significant, it's very important and so this is a big component of what we're doing is sharing that information accurately and it's also important to note that this information is protected by Hokaminam law. 
And what that means is that this is information that he shared and that belongs to him, belongs to the family. And um, we share what we're allowed to share. And it isn't anything that can be replicated without permission. Mm. So function, music, and language. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so our dad was also taught a lot of our uh, family songs, which he has been, been teaching us recently. Uh, so we've been learning all of our family traditional songs, and then we've been incorporating them into um, current beats with uh, language and uh, bringing it into uh, today's, I guess, urbanized music. And if we look at function, a lot of information was taught through traditional practices, and one of those practices is weaving, and Thea is a weaver. Uh, another one is carving, creating foods, just day-to-day -day living. Uh, I don't know if you want to touch on anything to do with that. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is, um, I think, I'm thinking in like a weaver's, I guess, mindset, it all kind of comes together in the most interesting ways, talking about storytelling. I think growing up with my family and growing up in the business, sometimes you don't even realize kind of what you're engaging in all of this mm -hmm. history and all these things that are coming together. And it's all kind of woven together in the most beautiful way um, where it just feels like life. And it feels like a life of kind of abundance and beauty, but you don't even recognize it. I don't even think I recognized it until yeah. I was older and then now engaging in the business uh, and engaging with all of these things. I, I really see like, wow, how much was kind of passed down that I kind of wasn't even aware of. Um, and so it's just kind of, it's like the fabric of life, you know what I mean? Living this life and living the way we live. And it really is woven through everything, like Anneli is saying. Uh, it's it's in the storytelling, and you might hear a story, it might be two minutes, it might be 20 minutes, maybe two hours. You don't even realize until it all kind of comes together, really, right? And um, the visual and everything, functional music, it's just kind of the living of life, and it's, um, it's kind of an, an art form. I know my grandma always says that kind of this life is like an art form unto itself, um, this kind of art of storytelling and this art of kind of living. Um, and I certainly see that in my weaving. And I, um, as I've kind of walked alongside my aunts and walked alongside my, my uh, you know, grandparents, I certainly see that come forward, that, that all of those things kind of being woven together in this really beautiful way. It's uh, so interesting. Um, I think it also kind of mandates, I don't know if you guys can, relate to this, you, you have to take a pause sometimes and recognize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, like I said, that you kind of start to reflect, you kind of get into this rhythm of life, but when you like take a pause and, and kind of zoom out, you really realize like all of the stuff that's coming forward. And, and, and then the things that do need to be documented and, and written down, you're like, wow, there's a lot of stuff there. So There's a lot of things to do in little yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and it, and it is a way of life. And then that brings us to the question, are these traditional or contemporary forms of storytelling? Mm. Um, it, it, it goes to that weaving concept. It is woven together now because we live in a contemporary time, but they're actually really traditional practices. And it's that the art of living, uh, weaving, storytelling. And it is all one. Um, I know it's, we're considered multidisciplinary, but it is all one thing, <laughs> entity in of itself. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the music and the heartbeat of the drum beat comes in because it's all being passed through that drum beat. We're all being taught it through that heartbeat, um, through our parents and our grandparents, and um, even bringing in language. Our grandmother, the late Hazel Good, some quat here from here in Samemo, was vital to the language revitalization in our area. So, I mean, our, we're fortunate enough to have um, some language, and our dad is able to remember language for specific tools, and carrying all of those things forward along with just how you say a word, whether you're singing it or saying it a little harshly, and the meaning changes, and it, it comes through the carving, it comes through the art, it comes through the music. Um, we're a super fortunate family to have that drum beat, that heartbeat carrying on through to our younger generations as well as we're able to share in a current medium, um, bringing our tradition forward, um, I guess evolving while keeping mm -hmm. it traditional. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, I was actually going to um, say, um, invite everybody to, if you do at any time have a question, I will be watching the chat box um, as we, you know, have a conversation and dialogue. And thank you for, you know, sharing what you have um, 
because some of the questions I had coming into this presentation today, especially from my own um, life situation, uh, being the daughter of a 60 scoop survivor, a residential a line of residential school survivors, is not growing up with the culture and to experience how that transmission of cultural knowledge is passed on through the generations. And I understand it to be uh, it being a, a way of life and not, you know, one um, form of, of pedagogy or teaching um, or um, that it is uh, intentional in that way, but it is in, in everything that you do. Um, and as you said, you have to step back and uh, recognize that um, is, is tremendously important. Um, so I just uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, there is a question that came in. It says, uh, do you record the oral history? So yes, we definitely do record as much oral history as possible, especially with our dad. He will be uh, no, he'll be 70 this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do record as much as possible. Also, when we go into the recording studio, we do record all of our family songs in its entire entity so that we have it recorded for ourselves as well as our younger generations. Um, like as the original song. So before yeah. we just to backstep that a little bit, like so people understand before we create a beat out of a song, we document dad performing the entire song and explaining it and the family history behind mm -hmm. it. But we also do that a lot with our legends and, and his carving. So uh, we learn new things every day from our dad. We were just um, working on a totem pole uh, for Chillicum House for the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. And he was out there explaining it to Tillicum House and just talking about healing and processes in women. And I just found out that we actually did have sweat lodges here up on Mount Benson pre-contact. Um, I had always thought it was something foreign that came in. So, you know, when, when our father um, speaks something that you haven't heard, you just lock it in and you have to take it in and be like, okay, I am mentally recording this right now. So we might not always, sometimes it's inappropriate to bring out our phone and actually I start do. documenting them. <laughs> I bring my phone. <laughs> I have lots of videos. But we definitely are, um, I don't want to take our parents for granted, and we are um, documenting as much history as possible, especially with our mother being 76 and our father being 70 and knowing um, how much knowledge I lost from not being, a, well, being too young to document my late grandmother um, it is so imperative that the time is now. We must record as much as possible. Um, we cannot allow how hard our parents worked to um, even bring back this and name a form of Coast Salish art. I mean, it was it was gone. Our father had to work with the museums and his legends to be able to pull up our art form and have um, pictures faxed or mailed. Uh, be before the internet. So it is so important and it is something that we are working really hard on documenting as much as possible. It's um, running through our veins to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we document visually too. So um, it is, again, because of the being at the brink of extinction, it's not as common knowledge that history was recorded visually. So um, this is something we've been aware of and taught to read. So technically you should be able to look at it of artwork and you can read it. You can read the story, the lineage. Pardon? The family, how high ranking oh, I thought it is. We were cutting out. Mm -hmm. it, it is cutting out a little bit. Okay. okay. Um, so we are also very careful to document any artwork, like just even a cell phone picture, just to make sure we have it. That's another form of documentation. And we try to remember. But, for instance, um, the oral history tradition is repetitive, and we've been taught the stories repetitively enough that I think if you pull us all together, we pretty much, we've got it. <laughs> well, and it takes about four of us to be able to know what our dad knows. <laughs> <laughs> and, these, yeah. and then the other thing is that our grandmother, Hazel Good, she proposed to our mother to marry our dad, and um, she taught her a lot of very important history. So we can oftentimes go to our mother, who was a person who uh, grandma shared a lot of information with, and she'll verify or help us to fill in the blanks that we may not remember. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know one of our uh, guest speakers yesterday, Yvonne Chartrand of um, the Vinnie Dancy, had said our elders are our universities and how aptly 
said, um, absolutely a, a critical um, a member of uh, our communities being able to, to share and, and transmit these knowledges, um, vast knowledges uh, and ways of life. Heather, we need to often look around that our parents are our Google, but they're not our Google. They're more like the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> 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 because we actually don't look much up. We Everything we go to do, we go to one of them. And they don't, honestly, do they not know how to do everything? Almost? There's pretty much... We yes. do, and it's also good. it comes into, it, you know, everything that we do coincides with our laws um, of our art, so we've often talked about maybe breaking up some art and giving you contemporary little abstract pieces of artwork. Mm -hmm. You actually aren't allowed to do that. Um, it's not in our laws to break up a piece of art because we're changing the meaning, the structure of everything. So uh, when, when working with our art, we are giving you the full piece, the full story, ensuring mm -hmm. that... Uh, we aren't changing and abstracting our uh, tradition. And that, that is just in terms of a traditional art form. So there are contemporary artists, and that is a, a different art form. We're, what Sophie's referring to is the style that our dad practices, which is a really strict traditional style. So that's in terms of that style, that's what we do. Mm, thank you. And we have one more question, um, and then I'm going to bring us to the next slide. I think that's a wonderful segue to share uh, what you're doing uh, in fashion specifically to share these stories. Uh, the question first is, do you struggle with trying to retain traditional authenticity while also making contemporary art? I, I think it comes down to that rural system. Um, our, our father is um, pretty strict about Hulkaminum law, so we have strict guidelines and protocols we have to follow, so it doesn't seem that hard. Yeah, I, and also because our parents had a clothing company before us, so we actually watch our parents do it. So I think it's just um, kind of in us to follow those rules. I mean, obviously, when we've asked to um, break something up and being told that we can't, that you know, we just shrug it off and move on and say, okay, because we are choosing to follow that traditional uh, form. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Struggles to try to get it all done in a day. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I've uh, flipped the slide to uh, fashion is a vehicle for sharing. Um, and there is another question that has come in. So maybe we can um, speak to this slide um, and then tie it to the next question, uh, which is, does every piece of traditional art have a story? Yes. For, for us. Yeah, in our family. Yes. yes. Hmm. Okay, so fashion for us is a way to combine and share art, history, language, functionality, and music. Um, it's just amazing that not only do you have the platform to showcase the art and the clothing, but then the ability to make the music to go with it is a big part of what we do. And it's a big part of the entire process. So when we design a collection, we oftentimes gain inspiration in the recording studio. And the collection becomes its own entity. So usually what will happen is I try to come up with some structured format. And then we go into the studio and Sophie just sings. And it's awesome. So then I scrap my papers and bring them out here and there. But what happens is the creative process um, from the creator just turns into its its own process and it translates into the garments and we visualize the garments on the runway while we're writing the music and making the music. Well I'm not too sure um, how many actually watched the video of our dad um, talking about the supernatural eagle and saying that he doesn't believe that I create the art it comes from the creator mm -hmm. and it comes from our ancestors so um, sometimes we, you really just have to go with that gut feeling, or our father will teach us a family song. Um, say, for instance, uh, we did the grizzly bear, and we have a family grizzly bear song, and this whole collection inspired um, by the very first grizzly bear. But it's not necessarily like we are just a vessel producing this from the creator or from our ancestors and really allowing our traditions to guide us and make sure we're follow, following everything um, correctly, not only has fashion always been a part of who we are as a people, whether it be through 
um, a swap of a traditional cheese blanket or um, our regalia, our masks. It's always been a vessel to say who we are, what family we come from, what language we use. Um, so we're just taking our old art and creating a new vessel uh, to bring it into this modern contemporary world. So although we're not necessarily putting on an old woven blanket, we are creating a recycled fleece blanket. Um, which happens to be an awesome cape. Yeah, right right which is what you're feeling now. <laughs> One of our favorites. <laughs> So we're definitely working on, it's not really, I, I feel like it's not, like I never imagined I would be a fashion designer and I really do believe that it's not I doing it. It is a gift from the creator, it's a gift from my parents, it's a gift from my grandmother and all the ancestors beforehand that is allowing us to continue these traditions. And I, I just have to make note that while we are inspired by something like a swap book blanket or a regalia, none of our pieces that we share are ceremonial. That's important piece. So a lot of people ask, can I wear this? Can I wear that? Everything's made to be worn. And celebrated. Yes. And okay. shared. That's important. Do you have anything to speak to with that? Yeah, I was just thinking about the kind of creative process and, and what Sophia was saying was really um, resonating with me. And I think what it comes down to for me at times is this real act of almost service. And I feel like um, you kind of surrender yourself in this act of service to the creative process and to kind of almost uh, this, the kind of creative community and to the community at large where you say like, I'm going to participate in this as my kind of act of service and this is what I have to contribute and this is certainly something I think we were taught in our family growing up, um, being part of a chief's family, it, it's just inherent that you kind of, um, you take on this duty of service, that you serve your community, you document these stories and it's all, it's part of your duty, you know what I mean? And so this, this act of being a vessel and this kind of act of surrender, um, it is kind of a duty and, it, and it's kind of beautiful the way it all comes together um, but to me yeah it feels like a real um, to kind of honor each of these things art and history and language and function it's all to me an act of kind of a, a greater service and it it to me like it translates across translates across the whole um, kind of of our culture like everything had a use right like everything was useful everything had served a purpose um, so it's just I think it's so ingrained in us to kind of uh, to approach our work in this way that uh, you just really surrender and, and you bring forward what needs to come forward from the creator yeah. from your ancestors yeah honor, honoring our lineage is yeah. really important mm -hmm. yeah. I think we can move to the oh next. before we move here we have thought a lot of herself here <laughs> oh no <laughs> Okay, one and only. so Faltalata is our mother's name. Here's our mom. Can you see her? I'm going to move it over. Can you see mom? Hello. <laughs> Are we on mute? We can't hear Heather. Oh, Wait. I was on mute. I had some activity okay. happening at the campus and didn't want to have that background noise. Oh. Hello, <laughs> welcome. Hello. Glad to see you here. Thank so you. she's just walked in the door while we're talking about Faltalata, which is our first collection. And this um, Faltalata is mom's name gifted by our grandmother, Hazel Good. It means maker of beautiful things. And this first collection was uh, to honor all of our matriarchs. Lovely. I'm going to go to the next slide so we can start to uh, show, showing this beautiful work. If there is a comment. Uh, that says, I am an artist. Uh, Charmaine says, I am an artist and clothes designer and fabricator as well. I adore your designs. So creative and beautiful. I'm going to flip to the next slide and I'm going to turn my mic off because there is some activity just outside my office area here. So here we have our Pox Ball uh, collection, the White Raven. So uh, we did a collection based off of the uh, raven that stole the sun. And when he stole the sun, he burned to a blue-black. Uh, so our whole collection is kind of, uh, it goes with all those colors and the spiritualness of it. It's a spring collection. Uh, we also translated it into Halkuminam uh, from here. So it goes, Pacha, Baxbal, Quinat, Shiaquam. And it literally translates into the white raven stole the sun and burned to a blue black. black. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've been having a lot of fun retelling these in contemporary ways um, by using fabric. 
and and the visual aspect of the show itself. So in the case of this show, the White Raven came out before the darker one. So it it tells a story in the way that it comes out on the runway. If you're watching for that. <laughs> and if the timing pans out, which yes. is very tricky. <laughs> yes, we do tend to get backstage and um, get a little bossy when it comes to music timing and the piece that's going out because it is... We are giving to, you the full story, so we're is, following those traditions. <laughs> it is supposed to go in line with the music. <laughs> we can go to the next slide. Yeah, and there's uh, many compliments coming in. Uh, the gorgeous fabric, uh, these designs, they're stunning, nice colors, amazing, very beautiful work. Here's a familiar one, Heather. <laughs> so here, um, the satin jacket on the left is our Quiet Sense, our Grizzly Bear collection. Uh, that was a really powerful collection mm -hmm. working with um, the Grizzly Bear and the very first Grizzly Bear ever. Um, we were also fortunate enough to be able to translate the full uh, story into Halkanenum working with a local elder here um, who was very kind and generous with the translations and that was all incorporated into our um, contemporary music. It was a, a lot of fun. Um, and then on the other side we have our beautiful Heather modeling on global uh, TV for us. We were able to do a segment on there um, and just share with a larger city and area uh, what we were about to produce our show in Vancouver Fashion Week. And what's interesting about that, about how things become and turn into what they are, we had just met Heather maybe within the month before, and um, she had offered to come over here to do a fashion show for us and in Sailor Shy Productions. And when we got the call for Global News, they said you need to have models. And lo and behold, we had Heather available to us. We had just met her, and it was so amazing that it was all lined up um, and then Alicia on the right-hand side, and then we have Riley TG on the left-hand side. She's also in the Grizzly Bear jacket, um, and she's modeled for us at Vancouver Fashion Week as well. Thanks. We can go to the next one. Uh, so this is more of our Guyatson collection. Uh, maybe we'll discuss the one in the green first. So that is... Um, that really, I'm going to only speak on that. That was really her work with our brother. Mm -hmm. So this one is developed by a painting from the 1940s from our great-grandfather. So if you look at our lineage on both sides, we have great-grandfathers and grandfathers and our parents, and it's funneled through multiple generations on both sides. And this is re regarding artwork on this side. So our great-grandfather was a classical painter, and we took one of his paintings from 1943 and added Joel's artwork with it. So we do often call this the grandfather dress, and um, it represents four generations of artists, that one piece. So Nanshu Natsli, I Love You, I Hold You, Dear, is another collection that we just recently showcased in spring. Um, we, I think we were definitely going through a little bit of a harder time working on healing uh, with some, just some of our family members not being as well. And we came across one of our dad's um, flowers as well as the hummingbird and the flower of life and the um, swatsili, quatsili, or squatsili, depending on which dialect you use, meaning hummingbird. Um, really brings you the medicine that you need um, to heal and the flower of life for love and just bringing everything that you need. So it was a really healing, uplifting show um, where I think us ourselves were able to work through um, just, I guess, traumas and sicknesses within the family and um, also learning our history and incorporating it in the language and the uh, beautiful artwork of our dads in this one. And then the music really corresponds in terms of healing. And I think that, you know, it just happens to land at a time where we need healing right now. And so where we're driven and guided by this experience of what we're creating, sometimes we don't know why we're doing it. And then when it launches or hits 
the mainstream six months later or whatever, something's happening in the world. And in, in the case of this collection, this is our current collection and we need healing right now um, as a society. So it's just pertinent that we have love and holding people dear and healing and beauty at this time. And you were, you've been at a few of the fashion weeks. Is there anything you want to talk about with the experience? Yeah, I remember my first one. Um, growing up with my family, I have always kind of loved business and especially indigenous business. It's kind of a different way of doing business. Um, <laughs> it can be chaotic and wonderful and crazy. Um, but I, I, you know, since I was like, really young modeling and then since I was 15 16 working in our uh, family's uh, kind of yeah retail art kind of shop studio um, gallery thank you um, and so I've always kind of lived around this stuff and it gave me a real passion uh, for business and so I actually ended up going to um, to business school because I just I, I loved uh, I loved what we did and I remember I kind of really um, this kind of question kept coming up for me is what is indigenous business? What does that mean? And I kind of, it kept coming up and coming up. I remember my first fashion show, I was standing on the side and it was just chaos backstage and, you know, clothes flying and, and everything going on. And I remember I was like, we're all, it's tense. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, we got to get this done and, and things are flying and you can't even, you're kind of so close to it. You can't even really pull out and see what's coming together. So I remember um, it was like showtime, the lights go down and I go to this side stage and I'm and I'm watching, and like the first uh, uh, model comes out, and the music comes on, and music's so loud, and it kind of takes over your whole heartbeat, hey, because it's so loud and it's so intense. Watch the fashion shows if you haven't. Definitely check them out. They're they're next level. It'll kind of blow your mind. But I remember in that moment, I just thought, this is indigenous business. It's like everything, you know. It's it's family, and it's it is the chaos and it's the stories and it's the art and it's, you know, the commerce of it all. And it's, it's all comes together. I know I was just like, I just started pouring tears. I was like, this is so beautiful. And I was so proud of my family, but the art show, like the, the fashion shows are just something, something else. They're a whole experience. And, and it's really, um, it, it really is like our, our culture, like it's everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's hard to even break it down into to one thing or is it storytelling or is it this? It just feels like everything. It feels like a total embodiment of who we are as people. Um, and, 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 uh, and what it means, I suppose, to be indigenous, if that's business or if it's art or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, they're kind of, they'll blow your mind the next level. They're, they're really amazing. <laughs> well, and, and actually the business part is what enables us to do this work. So a lot of times, again, people say, can I wear this? Can I not? And I'm like, please, wear it like we we need our our work out there because the more people support us the more we're able to do the next level of, of work that we do documentation creating everything and so that's where the indigenous business for us comes in is it and that's something our parents taught us because that's how our dad revitalized the traditional art form here was that they had a business and that funded him to make works of art and, and research and keep the momentum going. So that is a big component for us about the, the overall goal of revitalization and being part of the Coast Salish art revitalization movement. Mm -hmm. You can go to the next slide. <laughs> We're probably going to run out of time. <laughs> so I think we've definitely touched a lot on storytelling through fashion. Uh, we have been really having a lot of fun, though, uh, celebrating who we are through Vancouver Fashion Week. Uh, we've done, I think, four shows, mm -hmm. uh, four seasons. Unfortunately, everything is postponed uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, but definitely, uh, we are healing through just as everybody else and learning new mediums and how to work in this new world of, uh, I guess, COVID. You'll find on the bottom there's the... The Alaska Celebration just did an amazing virtual fashion show that we were in. We also had our social distance style online fashion show that Heather submitted to. So you'll find we're going to do more online for people, and that's what we're working on right now, is how to get these amazing, powerful experiences of the shows out to the public online. Next slide. Next slide. 
So I, uh, we have touched a little bit on sharing culture through music, maybe quite a bit. Uh, we really, really are enjoying uh, creating the music, um, learning the music. Here we have a picture. Um, this was so much this fun. Is the, yeah. <laughs> so much fun. This yeah. is the three of us. We're actually, um, Thea and I are holding wool, and Annalie is playing it like a bass. Like a bass guitar. It was so fun. Yeah, it was cool. So uh, that, this is actually for music that is not out, that I might be able to give you a little sneak, sneak peek of, actually, or listen to while we're talking. Um, so our current, our collection that will be coming out is on the supernatural eagle bringing the sunlight back to the people and women and um, spindle rolls bringing um, women weaving life. And just also things that we need right now. We're in a dark time. Um, so our music starts in a dark time when the sun is gone. It just happened that way too. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and just healing and prayers and coming together, which we do need to do with our current situations in the world. And um, how do we find our healing practices through that? And are we able to carry it forward and share it um, to help everybody through this dark time? Um, so we're really working on just weaving life and time, space, um, creating space for that uh, healing that needs to be done and working together. So bringing our women together because our women really um, are the glue to our nations. We're carrying life, we're um, teaching life, we're, we have to carry on our traditions. Um, so how can we really be strong women mentors and it's coming through in our new music that will be out in the like, next month or so. And not to be too pro women, we do have to put a plug in for those men because our dad is so supportive. <laughs> <laughs> he is our number one feminist. He, he, yeah. um, he's done a really good job of raising strong women and acknowledging what we are allowed to do. And I think also through colonization and residential schools, our women um, have had to take a back seat due to masculinity. And our dad really is like, no, you guys have rights. This is your position and own it, and we are so thankful for our dad allowing us to um, carry on a lot of traditions that I guess is currently taught that we're not supposed to because of residential school. Um, so we've been- And patriarchy. But anyways, yeah. these are all other topics. Well, it's also part of what we do. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely go on, but um, I guess- There there he is leading us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you want me to play a little bit of- Sure, the... we just have a couple of slides of- um... You know, we work with Rob the Viking. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He he takes all of these wild and crazy ideas that we have in terms of sounds like plain wool or um, using carving sounds. And mm -hmm. Thea went in and spun wool in the studio, and he yeah. takes those sounds and he builds them into beats. And it's mm -hmm. it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. Heather, I don't, we're just putting on some music, but I don't know if you can still hear us through it. Um, the music is just starting. I see a big thumb. <laughs> so, this is just, um, this is actually a sneak peek at our music that will be coming out. Okay, we might need to turn it up a little bit. Thank you for sharing. Your dad, and then followed by some information about the supernatural eagle. Uh, did yes. you want to speak to that? Yes. There we are. Uh, so there in the sneak peek of our music, we literally translated uh, the eagle bringing the sunlight to the people. So. Uh, we are able to take our language and our art, um, especially our current language with English. You know, we're not taught the stories all the time in our Hulkingham language. 
Uh, so being able to have the time to translate our, our history into our traditional language and being able to share it um, with the masses is amazing. And I'll let Amelie talk on that eagle. Okay, so you just heard the word yafela, that's eagle, and in Hokaminam from our region. And so if you go back to, again, this is all part of a continuum of everything, but if you go back to the time of darkness when the raven stole the sun, um, the people were in darkness and they prayed and they prayed to the creator and the creator sent the supernatural eagle who brought the sunlight to the people. And in various designs and artwork, and you'll see on this piece at the Nanaimo Art Gallery, the sun rays are coming through the eagle's wings and the feathers. And um, so it is a story of bringing light and hope to people. And um, our new collection has this theme woven into it. Um, there are a few various things in this upcoming collection, but this is what we're working on right now. And um, we wanted to share this story today because of the theme of Spirits in the Sun for uh, that Justice Institute of BC has, and also celebrating summer solstice with National Indigenous Peoples Day. So we thought this would be a good story to share. And it's an example of how traditional storytelling translates into our current time, it translates into our life, into what we're doing in this current time and space. Lovely. It's amazing to see that transition from the previous collection to this one and then the backdrop of what we are experiencing in society and that shifting uh, that we're going through. It's uh, quite phenomenal how these things are aligning. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, another slide of some more pictures, but I'd like to maybe <laughs> uh, pause and uh, open it up to see if there is any other qu uh, any questions. Absolutely. Those are just for fun. Mm. <laughs> Gorgeous. So I'll watch for the questions coming in. There is uh, the contact information. Uh, so everyone joining us and um, who would uh, request a copy of this presentation, uh, we have uh, your phone number there and uh, email address, uh, website. Uh, the website is fantastic. It uh, shares uh, your collection. It shares information about your family, about yourselves, uh, stories, access to the music. It's a, a one-stop shop um, in terms of getting um, you know, a real glimpse into the work that you're doing. Um, but I'm really, I, I'm so grateful for this presentation too and really sharing with us about what is transmitted through your collections and what you're doing in terms of documenting uh, culture, tra traditions and languages and then sharing that out in, um, in a whole piece. Um, and it, it really uh, speaks to holism um, and the in interconnectivity um, of all of these things, as you said, uh, representing that uh, oneness. And, and so I just uh, thank you for um, sharing all that you have today. Uh, see that there's some more questions here on the side. Oh, great question. What do you see as emerging, emerging trends within Indigenous fashion? Expansion. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I think you can see a lot of um, current designers um, really working on how do we fit our traditions into a modern word, modern world, uh, on a modern platform as well. And I think emerging wise, you can see many of us working to find those new mediums. What's allowed? What are we allowed to share? Uh, and where are we going? And I think for a lot of us, um, we just allow the art and the traditions to kind of guide us along those ways. And um, I think you'll definitely see a lot of traditional art coming forward in a modern platform, if that answers mm -hmm. the question. Hmm. It, it certainly does. And it's fitting with a theme that's been coming up uh, across our guest speakers. There's a, a longing for us to return to our traditional ways mm -hmm. and integrate that into um, our modern way of life. Um, you know, we, we know that when we are connecting with our languages and our cultures and our traditions, that this is an inherent strength for us. Um, and especially in a time of uh, healing and a period uh, where we need to be strong in that identity formation, uh, this is critically important. Um, and so again, I, I thank you for um, all the work that you're doing and your family's doing. There's a, a, a 
compliment here. You are a beautiful family, and I love the outfits that you're wearing today. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Shia. <laughs> And so um, we have uh, a few minutes uh, to 12 here if we have any other questions. Go ahead, Heather. We can't see them because we had to move so far away. Okay. So we're not addressing your questions or we, comments. We can't we, see we them. We had to fit everybody in. <laughs> Absolutely. And so there's a uh, comment that came in that said the way you present your designs is very inspirational. And a question, what was the name of the song that you sampled for us? Oh, we haven't named it yet. Oh, um, that's how, that's how new. inside scoop this it situation is. is. <laughs> it's still a bit of a work in progress, so we're still, uh, we have a few more little touch-ups to do on our next music, but it will most likely um, include the Yakula because it is all based on the eagle. So, um, I know, we another song is a Spindle Whirl song, so... Yeah. Oh, it, it could go this way or that way. And then we also <laughs> had some fun utilizing some of our um, Lahal songs. Um, so we're not too sure what it. Yeah. It hasn't given its name to us yet, but it will. Yeah. As we'll we let work you know on when, it. When it tells us. <laughs> I was curious about that. How that naming process, what that looks like or feels like. You know, it, we have that that moment of stillness where the ancestors are speaking to us. Is that how the name comes forward? I, I would say so. Yeah. It turns into itself because mm -hmm. like we can even go into the studio with an idea and we come out with something else. Completely different. And even the collection. So then you have to shift the artwork around too because you've gone more on to one thing and then it's going to turn into something else. So it shows, it reveals itself. Yeah. We're just like along for the ride sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what we'll do. Our, yeah. sure. like, okay. Or sometimes our dad will say this is how it has to be and that's how it has to be and then that changes it as well. But uh, we definitely just, uh, we do have a plan, we have an idea, and then we just go with the flow and allow it to take us where it needs to. Yeah, so we're not, we're not navigating blind. We do have a plan, <laughs> but we're open to change changing it, morphing it, and allowing it to turn into its own creative process, if that makes sense. Yes, I can definitely attest that it certainly has a life to itself. I know when I wore the, the raven dress, I, I felt that energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one is on fire, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. <Definitely. laughs> yeah. Well, we're at 12 o'clock. Um, do you have any closing words or any uh, final words that you wish to share with us before we say goodbye and uh, to say thank you again. I would just like to uh, lift my hands and raise my hands to you, Heather, and Haicha for allowing us to come and present to the Justice Institute of BC. Um, it's been a blast. And to everybody that's watching, Haicha, past the MCIA. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you in plural to all of my respected people and elders and uh, friends and family. Haicha, mm -hmm. we just raise our hands to everybody for taking part in Indigenous Peoples Day. It is so important that we celebrate who we are. Um, it is so important for non-Aboriginals to celebrate and learn and come on and recognize who we are as a people and to be respectful of that. We respect each other, uh, to love each other and just really celebrate everybody's individual personalities and cultures um, and prayer systems. Uh, so, hi, Thib, Kassiam, Ziyana. And then if anyone's, of course, the plug comes in now for the Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> um, we do post what we're up to on there. So when this music that you've heard today does have a name and when we are ready to put it out uh, online, you'll be able to know when that happens and follow it. I believe there is also a link on one of the slides that does take you to our music portfolio on Discography. Yeah, just saw, I can't say that <laughs> word. <laughs> on Spotify, Apple Music, we're on various platforms, so you just look up Ait Lalum. You can download the music. Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing that extra plug. As you said, it's uh, so important that we support your business so that you can continue to work in a good way uh, and, to, and do this uh, very important work. Just want to, um, I'm going to be turning off our recording shortly, but want to thank everybody again that has uh, joined us for this session and, and to listening uh, to um, 
all of the presentation and I also want to say um, a big thank you uh, to your entire family um, your your mom and dad um, Thea you joining as well with uh, your aunties uh, to to share um, your your beautiful family um, but the, the history your cultures hi mom um, <laughs> it's just been a tremendous gift and I couldn't uh, picture a more beautiful way to uh, close out the week and uh, really feel proud of who we are uh, going into National Indigenous Peoples Day on Sunday. Uh, so thank you so very much. And uh, I'm just going to turn off the recording and I'm going to stay on if you have any last thoughts. Um, but